Boo! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that the entire game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, anyway, greetings, folks. Uh, I'm Johnny, the Super Game Brothers, and once again, I brought my good pal Russ, the opaque senator. Did we ever get, like, an origin of that name? Um, well, the first time we did the, um, Let's Play as we did Knights and such, at first, we, I didn't really want to be known by Russ, and none of us really wanted to be by our first name, so we just kind of came up with stuff. And, uh, I really wanted to have something with Senator involved. That was my... Not that I'm a Senator, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not uh, actual... This is a disclaimer. Not actual not, Senator. Not actually a Senator. <laughs> That's why I'm so opaque, you see. Yeah. I so, can see right through you. <laughs> <laughs> they see through my lies. Yeah. They see through my lies. So, yeah, we, we all came up with names that wouldn't be, you know, 100% obvious. So... Yeah. If you're just joining us for Super Game Bros, folks, uh, Russ is usually what I call the Saturn guy, because every time he's here, we usually delve into... I the... come from the planet Saturn. Yeah. <laughs> the Saturn nature <laughs> with the Vulcan symbol. <laughs> it's like, you're just, a, you're just a hodgepodge of nerd culture. Uh, every time Russ is here, we usually uh, delve into some sort of uh, a Saturn library of games, and uh, we still plan on doing that for 2016, but... You know, I noticed that every time Russ is here, it's always him playing a game. It's never me playing a game. And I've said this many times. Johnny's play a game. Yeah. At least every 100 years when the forces of good. But anyway, start let's talk game. about the actual game we're playing here. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to take it easy a bit here. I'm in between games, between Shadow of the Hedgehog and Metroid Fusion. I decided to do some Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. And we did Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse for Halloween Fest this past uh, few months ago. You know... And that's about as uh, that's about as dreadful as it gets in terms of difficulty. The bloodlines for the Genesis may give me may give me similar shit in a later time, but you know what? I really want to push through the Castlevania games now. And I'm not gonna wait till next Halloween to do Super Castlevania Four. I might as well do it while Russ is with me. And I gotta say, out of all the classic Vanias out there, this is one of my favorites. This is a phenomenal 2D action platform game. If you oh. want to start with the classic Vania series, I, I, I'm, I'm, loading, I'm blowing my load like, real quickly here, but uh, uh, it's all over my face, neck, and chin. <laughs> but um, I wholeheartedly recommend Super Castlevania 4 as like your first Castlevania game. Well, it is a classic, and I do have veins. So, I mean, if it's going to be classic Vania, you might as well do it. Yeah, that absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because this, um, along with uh, Bloodlines for the Genesis and Rondo of Blood. Uh, for the PC Engine, and I guess you want to count Dracula X on the Super Nintendo, you can go and do that. Uh, they were the last, for a, for a while, classic Vania games, starting with Symphony of the Night in 1997. That's when they really started getting into the Metroidvania aspect of the series. Uh, for the better, mind you, because I'll absolutely... Uh, I'll play Metroidvanias before I play Classic Vania. Not to say Classic Vania doesn't have its own merits, hence why sure. I'm playing Super Castlevania 4 for you right now. Which is kind of cool for me. I am actually not as well versed in the Castlevania series. The little bit I do know about the games and the history itself is from watching John's channel and play, hit, being around in college and watching him play through some of the games. So yeah, this will be kind of nice because and four, as you, I think you were telling me earlier, is basically just a rehash of the first game. Yeah, if you pay attention to that opening crawl, you notice that it said like. Dracula rises from his grave every 100 years. That's a long fucking time for someone to rise naturally. But <laughs> this... <laughs> Let's get to give it some prodding for it to rise. Yeah, <laughs> Super Castlevania 4, you think, you know, sequel to uh, Castlevania 3. Well, I guess I say ca a sequel to Castlevania 2 because Castlevania 3 is a prequel to the first game. Um, it says, you know, once again, Simon Belmont takes on Dracula. But if he just risen from the grave after 100 years, that would make Simon, like, what? 150, 150 years, years, old. years old. Well, let's say he's in his thirty. He's gonna be in his prime when you're doing this. You're gonna be in your thirties. Probably he's 130 years old. Yeah, 130 years. You should, let's be, say. You should be bored. It should be. Bo should I be bored? Uh, that's kind of what we give Link though. Uh, Borticus. Bortic. Or... I don't know. I don't know because no, the the the, the bloodline of Bort. No, <laughs> the bloodline of Bort kind of runs in the Zelda tradition. True. Uh, who should we? What should we name this guy? I don't know here? what we should name this guy. We'll call him um, Spartacus. Spart. Sparkus. Creed. <laughs> Can we spit that? Let's, let's find out. There's only one way to find yeah. out, John. <laughs> Spell it out, buddy. Spart. Spart. <laughs> Sparta. Sparta. Oh, uh, not enough name. Spartacu. Spartacu. Spartak. Spartak. He's Spartak. 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 <laughs> I'm not Simon. Smart. I am Sparta. I am Sparta. Barbarian. Hear me roar. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm down with that. All, All right, right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Spartak. <laughs> Spartak <laughs> Belmont. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, this game can't be a sequel to Castlevania II Simon's Quest. It has to be a retelling of the first game, and I, I wholeheartedly think that's what it is. Although, if you read the text crawl, te text crawl at the beginning, it does say um, 
very professionally, I might add, yeah. that, a, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that the, um, it says Simon Belmont is once again called to take on Dracula, which does imply that at a hundred and something years old, he is going to, he's, I mean, he's very spry and very lacking in gray Come hairs. on, Russell Hutch, a 38-year-old <laughs> vampire killer. He got vampire blood on him. Man, no, not? he doesn't. He kills vampires. Look at him. He's all red from vampire. Yeah, yeah, he's completely yeah, covered. He's sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dark to me. He's a very southern vampire killer. A southern vampire. No, we're from Creole. Yeah, he's a Creole actually. vampire. Yeah, he's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is Super Castle 84 for the Super Nintendo. Um, I'm actually playing this on an authentic Super Nintendo, by the way, because uh, I have a rule when it comes to games I used to play. Like in my childhood, well, Super Castle Mania 4, I've, I've actually first experienced via emulator. I think I may have mentioned that uh, during my review of the game back in 2010. And, uh, but when it comes to like Super Nintendo games that I actually have a copy of, like a, a legitimate cartridge, I like to go back in time, you know, boot up the old Super Nintendo and fucking. Quite literally his old one, because yeah. uh, we tried to use his, his uh, Model 2. Model 2. And uh, it wouldn't play the game. I'm like, John, do you, have, do you have your original that you used when you were a kid? And he said, well, yeah. I'm like, I guarantee you it'll come in your first second try. And sure enough, we, we booted it up and first try this thing was coming in. Yeah. So. At a cost, though, you may be noticing, you know, Simon Belmont's sprite flickering here and there. And, you know, I cleaned the cartridge out to the best of my ability and the console out, too, to a degree. Not as much as the cartridge. But uh, it's not perfect. You notice that the sprites are flickering in and out. And that's something that does naturally happen with some games when there's sprite overload. Yeah. Uh, go back to <laughs> our Man. go back to our Yoshi's Island playthrough. Or the original Mega Man games. Or the original Mega Man oh. games. Holy shit, sprite flicker was Especially all over. Especially the first one. That game was oh. sprite flickering in the game. Yeah, it was. Which, I still love Mega Man, don't get me wrong. But yeah, but it's like, Jesus Christ, it's ugly as shit <laughs> to I, look at when so, it happens. So explain to me the... Okay, so where did the whip come from? I mean, it's such an odd weapon. I, I realize, it's, you know, it comes from the original Castlevania game and that, you know, Nintendo 90 what, or 89 or whatever the original one came out that you know that was the thing but what made them the creators go with a whip versus like a sword or a spear or a bow or what, do you, i mean do you know I anything about that i don't or? know the basis of the weapon choice when it's, it comes it's odd. like game design no i don't know the answer to that like chronology like in terms of the storyline i can give you the answer to that it was a, it was a whip inherited by the first belmont leon Oh shit! The professional. <laughs> the professional. The professional. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I never realized that. That's an awesome tie-in. It was a whip inherited to him, and it, it was given. Me. It was given power through alchemy, uh, actually from his dead wife, I think, uh, mm. to be able to be really effective against vampires. Not Natalie Portman. I think. No, not Natalie Portman. Okay. By the way, we just finished movie. watching The Professional. In case you guys <laughs> weren't about that. Uh, That'll be our running joke ah! for this thing. <laughs> the glade. Run away, Ben Boomerang. No, but in terms of like a game design, no, I don't know why a, a, a whip was chosen above a sword. Because I feel like, I mean, maybe to be different. Because I mean, I I imagine that ever. That's the thing about it that's so interesting is that when I think about other games from the time period, I mean, early Nintendo on, there really aren't many games that didn't like that are like fighting where you weren't either using your fists or some kind of sword or like a bow or a gun or something like that. The the whip it's kind of like a a very unique choice. So I was wondering if there's re if they did it for the uniqueness or if it was because. You know, they had a reason, like, oh, well, this looks better when we do the, the whip thing. Or, yeah. You know, I can't give you a straight answer on that. Head? But thinking back, yeah, I know. It's like one of the only times we fight horse heads in this fucking <laughs> game. And I think sure. maybe somewhere down the line when we get to the Dracula castle, but nothing's ringing a bell at the moment. But, you know, I, I'm thinking about uh, other protagonists in 80s Nintendo games, and I can't think of anyone else that uses a whip. I mean, Indiana Jones, kind of, but I don't, I don't remember that being... Yeah, but that's a film character, though. True. You know? I, 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 that, that did originate in film. He has to use a whip by proxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. You can definitely see, like, the sprite flickering. Just look, look at that <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's a reality killer. Fuck vampires. I mean, I can always just imagine him hitting himself in the head with that thing. She's like, ow! Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is, well, so this is what I'm doing to vampires? Well, I'm a real dick. <laughs> and he's covering, and he's covering all vampire blood, so he just starts feeling all this kind of pain. I was like, oh, no, don't, don't bother with on the Medusa heads, John. Once you, like, walk in a straight line, they're pretty much in a pattern. So uh, as long as you don't stop moving, they should never touch you. Hmm. Uh, but you notice, though, I got my cross weapon. That's my that's my go-to sub-weapon of choice for Super Castlevania. Unlike, you know, previous games, it's usually the holy water that I like holding on to because of how disgustingly broken it is. But in this game, it's the cross, folks. You want to know why? Because shit, man, it does so much damage. You know, this game is very horizontal <laughs> uh, when it comes to enemy design and boss fights. So you want a weapon that covers pretty much all your bases. And there's no better weapon than that than the, 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 the cross. Interesting. And also, I got, I, not, not only do I have cross, 
I have fucking triple shot cross, <laughs> which means I can do a fucking lot of damage real quickly to this skeleton guy. He's, like, he's getting all spry and shit. You better be careful. No, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. Holy motherfucker. You just, you go, go, just like, you want to break apart like that, do you? <laughs> all right, that's fine. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. You're cutting a little close there. Yeah, I was getting a little close there. You see, that's what happens when I try and talk and play at the same time. It's it's always going to be a... Oh, I, I It's going to be a burden of mine for the rest of this, you know, this channel's existence. You know, <laughs> it's like, that guy can't play and talk at the same time. He's a shit player. <laughs> and I'm not an experienced Let's Player like you are. So I remember the first couple uh, uh, times that's, that, that's what you call it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are a professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no women, no children. <laughs> <laughs> no women, no children. He's just a professional. <laughs> but... I mean... <laughs> what are your rules for Let's Plays? No women, no children. <laughs> like Let's Plays. <laughs> we only broke that one time. Yeah. We only broke that one time. That was because, well, we had your brother here and his girlfriend was here, so... We can, we can forgive that. But, uh... I find that to be... Interesting, I guess. Wow, look at the fucking green. <laughs> you know, people are wondering, John, why don't you just stick to the fucking Wii U Virtual Console? <laughs> to play Super Castlevania 4. He's like, you know what? Let's just let's just go with it. Fuck, this I picked up another sub weapon. I got the axe. I didn't mean to get suck. the axe. Oh, that God suck. damn it. I can see that from here. It sucks. What the hell are you hitting right now? It's like it's like it's a it's like a like a Bushman. <laughs> I don't know the fuck. The you president? Is. Yeah. You punched no, the president? Not, not the Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines in uh, Independence Day, which is also I can quote all of Independence Day the entire really? movie. Like I, I I can listen to a line and tell you what part of the movie they're on, what scene's playing, and the next ten lines. Like I could. Just <laughs> So I imagine you're pretty stoked for the sequel. I am. So I understand it's a guilty pleasure. Believe me, I understand. Independence Day is not necessarily supposed to be a good movie, but there's a lot. There are things that are good about it. I think the effects are still absolutely fantastic. It holds people. up well. Like, absolutely, visually, the models. Yes. Oh my god, the models are fantastic. I, I love Goldblum. I think Goldblum is awesome, and he's from Pittsburgh. So <laughs> ah, I actually checkmate. checkmate. <laughs> He's a professional from yeah, Pittsburgh, yeah. and he's I, I, here's and actually it's kind of cool. I, I, I did musicals and theater as well when I was uh, in high school, and uh, we used to compete for the Gene Kelly Awards. And he was the final presenter one of the years. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, and I don't really? remember who the actress was. And it was so it was kind of cool to see him on stage. Again, the reason why he was there is he's a Pittsburgh native, so it was uh, and and obviously a pretty big time actor. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I like for him. Pittsburgh, you know, I like it. I like I love Goldblum. And he's gonna be in the new Independence Day movie, and he, that, which if you guys haven't seen the trailers for, holy shit, it's it looks pretty damn good. I think, uh, it's I think it look. I will con contest it. I think it looks pretty generic. So it was the first Independence Day. Though. Yeah, but I was a kid when I watched that. You know, I didn't see that shit open. But you know, I, I mean, I go back to Independence Day nowadays for, for nostalgia reasons. Oh yeah. You know, and I do love like Goldblum's performance in that. Jimmy, it's Jimmy. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, man, I love it. Let's go faster. Let's, Let's go faster. <laughs> well, no, we're from Independence Day, not Jurassic Park. It's oh, wait, he did say it in both movies. He did say it in both movies. <laughs> wow, what a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it was a little more appropriate in, in Independence Day, for sure. Oh, you don't sink in the water. No, it's actually, that's mud. Oh. Uh, you, you're allowed to jump on it for a little bit. Don't stand in it for too long, otherwise. Yeah, that'll kill you. Okay. So mud yeah. kills you. All right, so what I'm trying to do now, because I really don't... There it is. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to see, baby. And chicken. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah the chicken. Yes, like, not the cross. Yeah, I want the... No, I want the cross. I love how that chicken's just sitting at a wall like that. Yeah, it's absolutely... You know, one of my favorite jokes, actually... That's this chicken. One of, my favorite, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite jokes in around Thanksgiving time is actually a Castlevania comic, where they got the whole feast prepared, and it was like, the Belmont family has the whole feast prepared. It's like, wait, you forgot the turkey. It's like, oh, good thing. And he just whips the wall, <laughs> and the turkey comes out of the wall. I love that joke. That's pretty funny. Another thing you also may be noticing, folks, uh, in case you haven't, for, for, for a second there, the, you know, the graphic glitching out kind of made me thought the dagger sub weapon was on the floor and I just walked over it. Uh, that's actually not the case. Uh, another thing you may be noticing that I'm doing, folks, with the sub weapon is that I'm throwing sub weapons at candles. Well, a cool little trick that I only f recently figured out about a year, about a few months ago during actually our Nintendo Thon Marathon for charity was that at every 10th candle you break with your sub weapon, you get a double or triple shot which allows you to throw more of the sub-weapon. So every time I see a candle, I'm going to throw a sub-weapon at it so I can get my double, triple shot. Fuck, I didn't mean to hit it with the whip. Yeah. <laughs> and you fucked Ah, the game's on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, John. <laughs> what the hell is that? Medusa? That's Medusa, Medusa yeah. Medusa man, you mean? If I had double shot, she, well, I mean, it's, it's still a pathetically easy fight, mm. with even without the cross, but if I had double or triple shot, that boss fight would be over before it starts. Watermelon man there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, get off me! You're not welcome here! <laughs> Spartak demands that you gun hand me! 
So, okay, so what's, uh, again, I'm not familiar with the Castlevania games. I, I, and I know you pick up hearts from candles and stuff. What is, this, like, the, the hearts have, are not your health, though, right? No, they're ammunition for ammunition. your sub-weapons. Oh. So when you every time you throw one of those glaives, you lose a heart, pretty much. Uh, yeah, every time I throw one of the cross, yeah. my heart goes down. Yeah, oh. they're, they're, they're bullets, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Bullets for your cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Bullet, put the heart Bullets for my valentine. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> much. I'm not the Yu-Gi-Oh character. <laughs> it's a, okay, cool. A little vase right there that I picked up is invincibility. Oh. Like returning from Castlevania <laughs> One. <laughs> that lasts a pretty, uh, considerable amount of time. Yeah. That's now I want to uh, I want to keep breaking uh, candles and sub weapons because I got a uh, yeah. <laughs> hey kids! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Spartacker. <laughs> I'm Spartak. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm gonna I'm gonna break these candles here because again the last thing I want to do and you guys have seen it, I I don't want to break a candle over my head. You lose the sub-weapon. Because I lose the sub-weapon. You know, this game is the last game, thankfully, I think. No, I think Bloodlines may do that. Where if you pick up a sub-weapon, your one gets immediately replaced. And you can't pick it back up. What about the uh, the money bags? Like, what can you use those They're for? just points. Oh, just points. Yeah. Ah, oh, point games. Yeah, point. Yeah, it's one of those games. So, was... this is not whose line is it anyway. No. The points do matter. No, 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 no. The points don't, the points don't matter. It is whose line anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> And if you get like a special ending or something like that, no, points, or... <laughs> no. That looks like it. when those things are flying downwards and then you kill there them, it looks go. like Michelangelo. The Triple turtle. shot. Triple shot. Triple shot is the the next best thing you can get when you get a sub weapon. I mean, if you get if you break enough candles with one sub weapon, you'll get eventually a double or triple shot. Those are the Roman numerals that I'm picking up. So if you lose your sub weapon, does it go back? You lose the, the double and triple shot too. I see. 